remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Oh yes, my friends, how deep does the rabbit hole really go? Dedicated to the only serious choice, the gospel of Jesus Christ in music and the spoken word, you're watching Light Source Victory Television Live. Me, your host, Pastor Jason McCauley, inviting you to sit back and relax for the next 55 minutes as we continue our journey into the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. Yes, my friends, Light Source Victory Television, after a year of hiatus, is finally back. Stick and, stick and stay. I will give you all of the insight and the details coming up. Let's get on the phone, call up friends and family, tell them to tune in. We are live, taking your phone calls. If you have any questions along the way, it's time for Bible study. We'll be right back. Oh, yeah. It is time. Yes, 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 yes. Grab your Bibles and all the things necessary in order to take the journey. Uh, if you don't have one, we will supply you with one via the online Bible. Those of you expecting to see the program Grades of Shade, Grades of Shade. Shades, a different shade of gray. We, we made some programming changes. Those of you that, that keep up with Facebook and all that kind of stuff and uh, tweets and all that are... Uh, up to speed, but, um, you know, after last week's devastating program, it was the worst program I've ever done in broadcast history, it was abysmal, abysmal. I did post it to the World Wide Web, though, only because, you know, if a show is bad or if a show is good, you know, it, do, it didn't disappear because you don't rebroadcast it. And so since we, uh, you know, warts and blemishes and all, it is what it is, so, you know, First 10 minutes of the program had no sound. Then this happened. Then the next thing happened. And it, it, it was just, it was just, it was a disaster. It was a disaster. Outright, downright uh, disaster. And, um, you know, I take full responsibility for it. I, I don't want anyone to think that it was the, <clears throat> that it was the TV station's fault. It, it, it wasn't. It, it was my fault. And my fault. My fault. I take full responsibility for it. Uh, you have to take responsibility for the things you do wrong. No one ever has problems <clears throat> taking responsibility for things that go right. Uh, it's the things that go wrong. A lot of great things happen, though. I uh, want to bring you up to speed on where we are and what we're doing. There was some talk about me leaving town. Point in fact, I did have resumes out all over the country, but uh, we have decided to stay here. Uh, can't bail out now. We've come too far to, to leave. So uh, as a result of the decision to remain active and stay here in the greatest city on earth, Hartford, Connecticut, New England's rising star, uh, we have aligned all of the things that, 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 I, that I'm involved in. And uh, as such, we're, we're going to stay right here in the, in the greatest city on earth. Uh, we're going to be having uh, a Bible study. Now, uh, Life Source Ministries... That, that mic is my fault. That, it's, 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 it's always something. Mike hasn't changed, though. We had this problem before we, before we stopped doing the broadcasts. What, what, what can I say? Uh, we are going to be doing Bible study here every Tuesday night from 9 to 10. Okay? 
Now, the Bible study is in conjunction with Sunday service. We're going to be starting Sunday service. For a lot of time, people have asked me, you know, where do you have services? Like to come to Sunday service? What are you doing about Sunday service? You know, where do you hold service? All this other kind of stuff. Well, you know, we were just doing what we were doing on television, electronic outreach, if you will. But starting, um, this, uh, starting February the 19th, we will be having Sunday service at the prayer place in Bloomfield, Connecticut. Now, we have a lot of different places that we can do different things at. There's a space downtown Hartford on Elm Street uh, where we will be also doing some things. And so I'm going to just read you uh, a, a lot of uh, the things that are happening. Uh, s s uh, Tuesdays, 9 to 10. Write this down so that, so that, you, <coughs> so that you have it. Tuesday nights from 9 to 10 will be Bible study. If you don't have a Bible, there, there, there's, there's, there's the online Bible. And uh, we encourage you to get your Bible and, um, and, 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 and have Bible study with me once a week. This is how I stay sharp in the Word. I have Bible study. So as it was in the past, so it is now. This is my Bible study time. Uh, uh, that I spend with you. We have a call. Hello, caller. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me on the air? I can hear you on the air, but it, it, the problem with the mic is it, it's greater than the mic. It's greater than the mic. Can you hear me now? Okay. I can hear you, but there's, it's almost as if it's static. How's that? No. How's that? No. No. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to, to say or do if, uh, if that doesn't take care. But I don't hear any static here. Maybe it's your television. I checked two televisions. Okay. Both televisions in your house, and, and there's a problem. In, in, in master control, is there a problem with the sound up there? The sound up there is fine. Okay. Is the sound okay? You, so there's, 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 there's no problem up there, right? Okay, it, I don't know, um, Mrs. McCauley. I think something's wrong with your telling you. Maybe you might want to invest in a new TV. <laughs> Okay. I, 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 I honestly can't, I don't know. It, um, sound in here is fine. The sound up there is fine. I can hear it feed, I can hear it on, on the monitor there. It's crystal clear. Crystal clear. And that's, that's the return from Comcast. Right. Are, are you having static at your house? Yeah. I don't want people to think that we live in separate houses. There's a problem at home on our television. Hmm. If Master Control is telling you that everything's fine, I guess we'll have to trust you. Just, just a little stat, just, just a hint, but it's, it's not overwhelming, because I mean, I can hear. But I appreciate the call. Okay. And, uh, we, I mean, I can, I, I'll do my very best to track it down, but, um, I don't know. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. All right, well, uh, that takes care of that. Um, you know, I do appreciate when you all do call in and let me know if there's a technical problem because um, I I can only do so much. But the, the, the cat, the crew here, the staff is being uh, very uh, proactive. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong. So uh, it could be a localized problem. All right. Sunday services will be starting 19th of February. For those of you that are so inclined to uh, come to a Sunday service where I am uh, 
uh, holding the service. It, it won't be like anything else you've ever experienced as it relates to Sunday services. Bring a pencil, bring paper, your Bible, so that you can take lots of notes. Uh, the Sunday services are more like a class, if you will. I use a whiteboard and I teach. And so uh, if you want to if you want to dive into the word uh, Sunday at the prayer place, two o'clock to four o'clock. Now, when one of my mentors, when I was coming up, we had Sunday service at from two to four in the afternoons on Sunday. And, and that always stuck with me. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have Sunday service at, at two in the afternoon every Sunday. So if you go to church in the morning or if you go to church in the evening and you're one of those people that likes to go to church, uh, then you stop by us uh, in between church services or on your way to church or on your way home from church, you'd stop by at the prayer place, okay? Sunday service at the prayer place starting February the 19th from um, 2 to 4 o'clock. Also, we are going to be holding auditions. If you like to act, if you can sing, I mean, you gotta be able to really, really, really sing. Uh, and you have to be able to act. We're gonna be having auditions. Auditions are gonna be held Saturday, February the 18th for a new project entitled King's Kids. It is a stage play, it's a musical, and it will also be done as a motion picture project. So that is the Light Source Stage Company's project for 2012, King's Kids. It is a stage play and motion picture project. And of course, our ongoing signature play, The Door. Uh, we will be casting for that. Of course, there's a, there's a standing cast for that play and uh, we will uh, but we will be having auditions for our stage company. Now our stage company uh, meets once a week because Lights or Stage Company, in addition to being a theatrical company, is also a theatrical ministry. And so uh, people that, that want to get involved in that, all you have to do is come out and, and ad audition. Now, I'll give you more information as to where you can audition and, and, and how to audition as uh as as that day as that day approaches but uh you know spread the word let let folks know now this is very important on also on february the 18th from 11 o'clock to two o'clock we're going to be having the first of our video production workshops um for the news hounds now the what we what we what we're doing is we're having um news hounds is the news hounds workshop it's it's designed to teach you how to be a, a reporter how to go out there and, and get the news and uh we will be um teaching you how to do that uh, and then once our our team gets settled uh, we'll be reporting the news as it relates to the city of harvard specifically and so we're, we're going to be training 40 news hounds covering everything from city council meetings to NRZ meetings to uh, events around the city. Uh, we're going to blanket the city with our news hounds and they will be the eyes and ears and the conscience of the people of the city and, and our news hounds will be, bringing, uh, will be bringing you news. So our, our very first workshop will be February the 18th uh, on, on, on the news hounds. That, that, that workshop will be downtown. Also, the program that used to be on at this time, A Different Shades of Grey is being reworked. It will be a panelist, a, a we're gonna, we have, we have uh, several people who have committed, four people who have committed to being on the program. I can guarantee you that the program will be um, really, really good. Um, really good. Uh, let me, let me drop uh, two names. Uh, Dr. Kuba Astagai and uh, Earl Shepard. Uh, I'm I'm these, these two guys are dynamite and so are the other two. So I'm, I'll drop those two names right now because you know neither one of them will hold back, particularly Dr. Astagai when it comes to expressing things that are necessary to move the African diaspora forward. And so uh, our commitment to the community, our commitment to the neighborhood, our commitment to the city, to the city still remains. And, and we are fully in and fully dedicated to moving an agenda forward 
that, that uh, one can do as a private citizen. And you, you can't do everything as a political figure because you have too many people to please. But as a private citizen, oh, my goodness. There's so much that we can do, particularly when you remember that the most important thing is what you see on your screen. Those of you that have the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God, open it up to Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 1. And this is how we will have our Bible study, by the way. Okay, so you come to Sunday service. Then you tune in to Harvard Public Access Television for the live Bible study. If you miss it on Harvard Public Access Television, then you can, you can log on and, and go online and watch it uh, on Facebook. You can watch it on accesstv.org. All right. And uh, this will be how, how we have Bible study. So you don't have to come out to Bible study. You just got to get to your television. I'll come out and make sure that uh, I'm here. As so that you will have the life-changing, life-giving word and, and, and the ability to go through it. Now, we're going to start off uh, with uh, Ecclesiastes. And what we're going to do, and this, this will be, um, now this will be fun. Because what we'll do is this. Well, that transition's awful slow. That's better. There we go. What we're going to do is this. I'm going to go through Ecclesiastes this week, next week, and the week after. That's three weeks, I think, uh, before the 19th comes. Then after that, what will happen is what begins here will end on Sunday. So you, you, you need to come to, to Sunday service, and you also need to tune in once a week for Light Source Victory Television for the Bible study because where one begins, the other ends, and where one ends, the other begins. So, so that, that will be the deal. Now, there is a repeat slot in the morning for, for this program. So those of you that are watching this in the morning, now you're, you're, you're up to speed as well. Okay? At any time during the program, you may feel free to call me. Let's see, can we get the phone up? There we is. 860-944-9797. If you have a question, comment, criticism, or remark as we're going through the teaching, then call. This is not open forum, and we're not discussing any and everything under the sun. We're discussing the life-changing life, giving life giving everlasting word of the Most High God. Now, what I like to do is use the events of the day, political, whatever, to help you wrap your brain around what it is the Word of God is trying to say and relate to your life. To present to you the Word in such a way that at the end of the program you either accept it or reject it, but you know what it is you're leaving behind. And that's how we're going to proceed because that's how we've, al how, how we've always done that. So with 36 minutes, Two seconds left in the program. Let us continue on your screen. There it is. Uh, the phone call is like raising your hand. If you were here at Bible study and you were sitting in the room with me, if you had a question, you would raise your hand. You would glance at me. You'd look strange or something like that. And I'd notice that you had a question on your mind. And I'd say, is there a problem? I cannot see you at home. So it's going to be up to you that if you have a question, call. There is no such thing as a stupid or dumb question. Stupid and dumb questions are the ones that people don't ask. All right? It's, if you have a question, that, that means there's a realm of ignorance. Now, for you to leave ignorant when you had the opportunity to gain knowledge is foolishness. I don't like hanging out with foolish people, even if they're watching on TV. So what you need to do is if you have a question, call. If you don't want to talk on the air, call me after we get off the air. If you're watching us in the morning, even though it's early, like 6 a.m.-ish, you can still call. I don't mind. That is my cell number, and if you call and I can see that you have a phone number, I will answer the phone, and I will address whatever questions that you may have. All right, and that's how we keep it all very, very real. All right. These are the words of the teacher. On your screen is the New Living Translation. 
in the first window. That's this window over here. Okay, that's the New Living Translation. On this side of your television screen is the King James Version, also known as the Authorized Version. Actually, that's... that's there we go, yeah. Okay, so this is, the, this is the Authorized Version of the King James. On this side, we have the New Living Translation. Now, I use the New Living Translation because... It, it just saves so much time uh, trying to translate old English into modern English and it just it just it just makes it a lot a lot better when when we use modern English but if you have uh, upbringing in the word like I had one of my mentors used to tell me drill it into me if it ain't in the King James it isn't in the Word of God now of course we know that's not true but for many of you it is so you know uh, there are some dangerous translations of the Bible uh, the New Living Translation has obvious errors and some problems uh, but n no, no I mean it's it's a much better translation than me trying to translate the King James using the Greek and the Hebrew into something that you can understand okay so that's why we use <coughs> the New Living Translation these are the words of the teacher King David's son who ruled in Jerusalem. Everything is meaningless, says the teacher, utterly meaningless. The King James puts it this way, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. These are the words of the teacher, King David's son who ruled in, Jeru in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Now, you know, you read through this, and it, it, it could get depressing. So before it gets depressing, let me, let me, let me tell you that this, this in the end says, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. For the whole duty of man is to serve God and keep his commandments. David the king, son, Solomon, who wrote this. These are the words of the teacher, King David's son, Solomon, who gave his heart to know all things. And, and, and he soon discovers in life that all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Okay, so, you know, let's say you run for mayor. Okay, something I've done twice. And, 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 and you run from mayor to make a difference in your community, this is any other thing, and then the community doesn't vote for you, so what do you do? I mean, you know, it's, it's meaningless. All it's meaningless is loss. Well, no, it's not loss. You learn something from every experience. But to what avail? Let's take the previous administration. Like I said, I like to use modern day events to help people wrap their brains around this. Let's, let's, you know, the, the outgoing administration before the new one came in, the Perez administration, all that Mayor Perez did for the city to move the city forward, his vision and the things that he did to try to make a change. He made a change. He upset some people. People moved against him. Next thing you know, he's out. Who knows if the guy coming next will pick up the task and move forward, or will he undermine everything that was done? And to this extent and to this degree, vanity and vexation of spirit, or vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. Verse 4, at the top of your screen. By the way, you can get a copy of this software by logging on to the online Bible. Dot org and you do download it and you'll get the latest and greatest in the modern version what i have here is the version i've had since 2002 so it's it's not the latest and greatest but it's the one that works for me and since it works ain't no sense in changing it to to something that you know might be in inoperable generations come and go but nothing really changes i mean how long have things been the same here in harford a generation can come, generation can go, things is pretty much the same. It's not just Hartford, though. This is a human condition. The more things change, the more they stay the same because what is the conclusion of the matter? 
that there's something greater than all these things that we try to bring about. I mean, you can be distracted and sidetracked from the issues that matter most. And sometimes you get sidetracked trying to make things better. Well, all the time, what it is that you're doing is just making it worse or at the very least, it stays the same. Generations come and go, but nothing really changes. The sun rises and sets and hurries around to rise again. Days come, days go, right? Verse 6, the wind blows south and north here and there, twisting back and forth, getting nowhere. Verse 7, top of your screen, reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, the rivers run into the sea, but the sea is never full. Then the water returns again to the rivers and flows again to the sea. Everything is so weary and tiresome, no matter how much we see, we are never satisfied, no matter how much we hear, we are not content. That, that's why, you know, if you have addiction to things, whatever it was that set you right is no longer enough the next time because there's always a desire for more. You know, you go sightseeing and you've seen things and now if you go back there, you saw that already, so now what? You know, you climb a mountain and now there's, you climb that mountain. You, you need to climb the next highest mountain. It's like chasing after a high. And so you, you keep chasing after this thing, you keep trying to grab a hold of it, but once you get it, now what? You know, the Bible talks about in the New Testament, I've learned to be content in, ever, in every, in whatsoever state that I am in. I, I've learned to be content. All right, and that kind of contentment comes because you have life lessons by which you have learned. The preacher, Solomon, says in verse 8, everything is so weary and tiresome, no matter how much we see, we are never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we are not content. History merely repeats itself it has all been done before. Nothing under the sun is new. Nothing. Now, it may be new to you, but it ain't new. It's it just not new. You find something that's truly new, and then you have proof that the Word of God is not forever settled in heaven. God's Word is forever settled in heaven. God's Word says there's nothing new under the sun. We just keep rediscovering things over and over again. You know, you say, well, what about all these computers and all this kind of stuff? You know, how do we know if this is new or not? Well, you know, the Bible talks about the Tower of Babel. I would contend that the Tower of Babel was a universal communication thing. And uh, we're just now catching up to the technology that was in the days of old before the flood. You know, they can't sell iPhones fast enough. Soon you will be able to talk in whatever language you have, you know, your native tongue. You'll be able to talk and it will be translated into the native language of whoever it is you're talking to. A universal translator. So the language barrier will be gone. We've already have a, 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 um, a uh, unification of, of money through the electronic currency. Now, what will happen if we get a huge solar flare that hits us directly? A couple weeks ago, uh, we had a solar flare that erupted on the, on the sun, and uh, the, uh, the uh, northern lights, the, what is it, the, the uh, aurora borealis or something like that, um, it, it was a spectacular light show in the sky. If you were in the northern hemisphere or near the poles, you could see these. You can see this, and it was extraordinary because it was more than normal. But what would happen if we had a direct hit from a really big solar flare? It would wipe out like an EM blast our whole electronic systems, if you will, the, the, the computers and all that other kind of stuff. And we, we would be, we, we, we'd be stuck in the mud and dead in the dead. So history repeats itself. It's new to you. Verse 10, the top of your screen, watch Lights Source Victory Television as we approach 25 minutes to the top of the hour. Uh, we don't remember what happened in those former times, and in uh, future generations, no one will remember what we are doing now. 
And, and, and to this extent, vanity, vexation, spirits. I mean, you know, you, you give whatever it is. Pick something that you do. And something that you've done real well. And like nobody remembers it. Now, this may sound odd coming from me, but you know, uh, you know, I think that the Perez administration did a lot of good things here in the city of Hartford. I've always blamed the people around him, particularly his communications team. If they were a crack notch team, they would have done a much better job at noising abroad the things that Mayor Perez accomplished. I mean, under his watch with John Wardlow, all the housing projects were turned in almost like suburban housing. I mean, a lot of great things happened in the city of Harvard, but you know, if, if no one knows about it. Well, what about the old brickyard that people talk about here in Harvard? They grew up around the brickyard. Or you go over to Enfield Street or some of the streets over, uh, you know, Westland Street and, and what those streets used to be like, or Barber Street, what it used to be like and the stores that were up there. And, you know, people don't remember what it was like. And the great things that people do, folk forget. And then they hear false stories and then they get twisted around and before long the good that you did becomes the bad. So to this end, vanity and vexation of spirit. Verse 11 out of the King James says it this way, There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Modern English, we don't remember what happened in those former times and in future generations no one will remember what we are doing now verse 12 I the teacher was king of Israel and I lived in Jerusalem I devoted my life to search for understanding and to explore by wisdom everything being done in the world I soon discovered that God has dealt a tragic existence to the human race. Everything under the sun is meaningless, like chasing the wind. What is wrong cannot be righted, and what is missing cannot be recovered. Okay, now if someone does you wrong, it can't be righted. You hear about this guy that was in solitary confinement for like two years? They forgot about him? He was arrested on some like little silly traffic thing and he was he was like in, in jail and because he had a little like mental condition they put him in solitary and then two years later, you know, finally he gets out twenty million dollar judgment was awarded to him. You check it out, it's on CNN. Now he, he I mean, you know, how do you repay a guy for two years of his life being mistreated by police and, and brutally brutally entreated by, by uh, you know, guardsmen at, 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 at the jail. The vanity and vexation of spirit. You can't write that. You can't be right. I lost a pair of glass. I had a pair of glasses made, and uh, from time to time, I think about it. They, they were really nice glasses. They they cost me a hundred dollars to to have made. This was way back, like in nineteen eighty something, and they were they were yellow, rimless kind of glasses. And uh, back when glasses were big and you know square and all that other stuff, and I lost them. And you know, from time to time, I wonder where those glasses are. But you know, they're lost. And it can't be found. You know, things lost are lost. It, 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 it just happens. Verse 16, I said to myself, look, I am wiser than any of the kings who ruled in Jerusalem before me. I have greater wisdom and knowledge than any of them. Verse 17. So I worked hard to distinguish wisdom from foolishness, but now I realize that even this was like chasing the wind. For the greater my wisdom, the greater my grief. To increase knowledge only increases sorrow. See, one of the good things about running for mayor is you can run off at the mouth about the office and the things associated with it because, you know, if you're not going to step up to the plate and try and do something about it, keep your mouth shut. That's always been like one of my, you know, main sayings, you know, it, be about to change or shut up. 
talk is cheap. So, you know, if you think you can do a better job, then step up to try and do the better job. But that gives you a certain element or a certain ability to talk about certain things. Having said that, the more you know, the worse it is. You know, to whom much is given, much is required. But you find out some things sometimes and you wish you had known. You, you, you really wish you, you, you could go back to a time before you didn't know. Like the level of corruption in this city is off the, it's off the chain. But, so what are you going to do about it? What can you do? There isn't anything you can do about it. And, so, and this brings grief because you know what's going on, but, but then what can you do? I mean, you know who's involved in what. You know whose hands are in the cookie jar. You know that all decisions are made that are there because all every decision in Harvard is a political decision. And nothing can be more true than that statement. So things happen because of political stuff, and you know names, and you know people, and you know, I'm in a rather unique position because, of course, I'm like a non, uh, unofficial confidant for a whole lot of you. So people tell me stuff that, that I know and I hold in secret, and then I see other people fronting about stuff that I know <laughs> that they did and are doing. But you know, so what? So you know, with much wisdom, with much awareness of information comes much sorrow. Because what can you do about it? Nothing. You see, this is why the conclusion of the whole matter remains the same. As you go through chapter after chapter, reading through Ecclesiastes, you find that at the end of the day, all that matters is your service to the Creator. Your service to God. For this is the whole duty of man. Serve God and keep his commandments. Serve God and keep his law. Are you putting him first in the things you do? Because there is serious evil wickedness out there. And at the end of the day, the battles that we undertake are battles between that which is right and that which is wrong and the right and wrong need to be distinguished between civil law, canon law, and God's law or natural law. All right? Because there's the laws of religion and religiosity. Man's attempt to appease God as man sees him. And then there's civil law which changes with every legislative session because today this is no good, today that is good, today that that was good is no good anymore because after all, what are laws? Laws are the rules by which we govern the expenditures of money because that's all the capital does. Bills are there, they fund things. That's why I don't let anyone ever tell you that when legislation is passed to help fund a little community center or some nonprofit or whatever the case is, that somehow you're, you're, you're stealing money from everything that comes from the cap. Everything is funded. The name of the game is how do we get all this, this redistribution of wealth? And so everyone's fighting for these blocks of cheese. Now, my problem is that many times those of you that are on the lower end think that you're lucky because you got a crumb. And folk are fighting and kill one another over a crumb piece. It's just, a, just let me taste, let me let, I just want to lick the cheese. If I could just lick be a little piece of cheese, I'd be happy. You know, and if, if I got to look down and talk it in a, in a subservient voice in order to lick me some cheese, and, and I'll be the governor of the, of the flavor cheese and how the cheese is, 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 is disseminated among the people. I learned to disseminate in, in, in that school they taught me. Uh, I disseminate the, the, the aroma of the cheese. I let them get a little smell, but I go, let, 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 I go give them a the, the big piece of my cheese. And, you know, I get, I, get me a, I get me a whole box of cheese aroma for being the gatekeeper here at Hartford. Right? And, 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 and so, you know, there's more. Don't feel like a second-class citizen because you have a need. You, you, Jackson Labs has a need. And the dirty little secret there is the money that's been bonded for them is not going to be spent on them right away anyway. It's going to go into the general fund, and then that money will get spent off trying to keep the state afloat. 
You got to find someone who's willing to take the ride along with you. You see, with the more you know, the uglier and dirtier it gets. Everything is vexation of spirit. Vanity of vanities. Like chasing the wind. So I worked hard to distinguish wisdom from foolishness, but now I realize that even this was like chasing the wind. For the greater my wisdom, the greater my grief to increase knowledge only increases sorrow. Verse 1, chapter 2 at the top of your screen, reading from Ecclesiastes as we approach about 13 minutes left. We've got 13 minutes left to the program. Uh, you know, I said to myself, come now, let's give pleasure a try. You see, he, 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 he says, well, you know, I'm king, I'm, I'm wise. Let me, you know, so he gave himself to be wise. Study the deep things. Nah, my intellectual superiority far exceeds those of the little people below me, and I'm smarter than the fool, and I would never do such, such grotesque things in airs of my intellectual prowess. And so, you know, and, but, but at the end of the day, so what? The things you accomplish, nobody remembers all your wisdom, so what? So what? You're wise in the ways of the world. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. And most people that walk around today, they claim to be wise, have no fear of God at all. In fact, they flaunt. The reality of God. Professing themselves to be wise, they declare there is no God and become fools. So he says, you know what, look, let me, give, let me give pleasure a try. Let's look for the good things in life. But I found this, too, was meaningless. Or as it says here in the King James, vanity, emptiness, meaningless, of no value, just empty, okay? It is silly to be laughing all of the time, I said. What good does it do to seek only pleasure? You know, pleasure seekers. And, and then what? You know, seeking after pleasure can be very depressing because after a while, you know, what is it that pleases you? See, there's only one thing that you can seek that is satisfying, which is the conclusion of the whole matter. God. Seek God, right? You, you know, this is the whole purpose of man. Serve God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Only when you have that place within your being that you have the relationship with the creator that you can walk by faith, not by sight. All right. Only then can there be this sense of satisfaction and completeness. Now, for me, I can't speak for everybody, but, but for me, that's Jesus. All right. I believe that Jesus is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and those who don't, don't know him when they die, they're going to go to hell. I mean, that's, that's what I believe. But, that, you know, if that doesn't work for you, then, then you know, that's something you got to figure out. You know, I, I've done all the comparative religious studying that I'm going to do, and I'm, I've settled on what I've settled on. But the, the principles can be applied. The, you know, one thing is for certain, until you come to that place, where you, until you understand that, that God is, that he is, and that um, it is he and he alone that satisfies that which you long to, to you did you long for. Uh, you know, seeking after pleasure is going to be empty. I mean, you know, you'll be happy one day because you, you know, done did got for the ebonically challenge that that's, uh, you know, you, you, you achieved or received. But you done done, you done did got something. And then what? Then it's gone. Just like that. Okay, you, 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 you got good health. Next day you know you've been stabbed multiple times. My next door neighbor was stabbed multiple times. Up on Enfield Street. Ten minutes left in the program. And then, and, and then like two doors down from me on, on Winchester Street, a lady a car was blown up. I live in one of those challenging neighborhoods, and yes, I still live on Enfield Street. 
and uh, I don't plan to be moving any time in, in, in the near future, you know. As long as my daughters don't need to go outside and play in the backyard. <laughs> when that day comes, I'm moving, okay? Uh, unless I can accomplish a, a real remarkable change in the community. And I'm, I'm going to try my best. That's why I moved over there. And so not achieving the goal of mayorship doesn't mean that we stop trying to better our community. Because now, of course, the elected officials work for me as they did before I ran. So I will be holding them accountable. And, you know, I want my street paved. I expect my street to not come last when it comes to snow removal. Uh, I don't want to see unequal distribution of city resources in the terms of money and street sweeping and all that other stuff because, uh, you know, there's other communities that seem to have a bigger voice. I'm here to tell you there is one big voice if it was only mine in the North End on the Enfield Street in that little community over there. And so I expect that that street's issues and problems will be given as much attention as all the other streets in Harvard. Okay, particularly downtown. I think, I think what downtown wants to do is great because whatever resources, whatever aid downtown get, the rest of the city should get. So let's give them everything they need so that we can get everything we need. We all do it together at one time. Right? All right. You cut the branches off the tree and the tree will die. So, you know, so what? Pleasure. Pleasure seeking. It, 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 it can only go so far. After much thought, I decided to cheer myself with wine. While still seeking wisdom, I clutched at foolishness. In this way, I hope to experience the only happiness most people find during their brief life in the world. Now, you know, you know, you get your little wine. You know, you get you be on one. Sometimes wine ain't enough to cut the mustard, so you, you know you up it up a little bit. You, you get you some 151, some rum, some scotch. You know, and you know after a while you get used to. That. I used to have a friend of mine could do a whole bottle of Bacardi 151 and keep walking. He walked, and he was a scientist. He was a uh, a mathematician, graduated from Florida. Uh, Institute of Technology, and he could, he could, he could, he can, you know, he could do mathematical equations and calculus and statistical stuff just off the top of his head. He could do stuff like that. He used to work over Prime Whitney. And he would get fired up. He'd be talking about the you know, astrophysicists and all this other stuff. And he'd go on for these conversations would last three and four hours and start right over again at the, at the, at come full circle back around. I see, I says, look, man, Ernie, I gotta go. I, you know, you, you've been saying the same thing. Now you're starting to, to repeat yourself, brother. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, you get to where you can handle a whole fifth uh, of rum, and you know, you need something else to help, help, help push you over the edge. So now you start, you know, s smoking a little weed along with your rum. And then, you know, snort a couple lines of cocaine. You know, you hang out with the right people, you get cocaine. You know, don't be scared, anybody. You know, I ain't gonna mention no names, but you know, you go to some of these high power houses, folk be smoking marijuana and everything else. They had to legalize pot in Connecticut under a couple of ounces because all the heavy it is just smoking it. Have it delivered right to the apartment. Good stuff. And two hundred and hundred fifty dollar an ounce stuff. Stan, it's time for you to leave, brother, because we's about to get busy. And so, you know, I mean, you know, what is it that it takes for you to experience that place of joy now that you are seeking after pleasure instead of he who satisfies to the utmost each time you seek after what it is he has to offer? You see, the king wanted to experience what most people in life experience. Just a little, just a little feel good. Or because, you know, 80% of the people, they, they just want to go finish their day, come home, and sit down and relax. 
have a cold one, watch the game, watch your kids sing or do something like that, play with the kids, and then go about their life. They're not trying to change the world. You know, and most people struggle through life. Most people, life is not easy. People are looking for how they're going to eat today and, 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 and struggle to make ends meet. That's, that's life for most people. So he wanted to know what it is that most people deal with. So he gave his life to know these things. Oh, my, 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 my. We got four minutes left. Our time is running out, my friends. All right, our time has come to an end. Get the number up on the screen. There we go. 944-9797. If you'd like to call in, this is how we take an offering. Call and say Jesus is Lord to hang up, let someone else call. That's how we do it here. We don't we don't take your money. We're on one of the few ministries on the air that has never taken money from our viewers. 944-9797. Call, simply say, Jesus is Lord. That's how I know you attended the class and received something of value. If indeed you did receive something of value, it's only as good as your willingness to pass it on. Tell somebody that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He alone saves and changes lives. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. We'll see you right here next Tuesday doing the same thing. We'll take your calls as we go off the air. Light Source Victory Television. Jesus Lord. Amen. God bless you. All right, stand by. Bye bye. If you missed any portion of the program, you can catch the repeat right here on Hartford Public Access Television, Cable Channel 5, or log on to accesstv.org and watch us there. You can also watch it on Facebook. Uh, just Facebook Macaulay. See you next week. Bye-bye.